You don't want your skin tones looking like this or this. So let's cut out the fluff and hop into FCP so we can learn how to get perfect skin tones every time you edit. The first thing you need to ask yourself is does my subject's skin look like an accurate color of skin? For example, in this shot, there appears to be a yellowish cast on her skin. It could be some bounce from her sweater, but nevertheless, we'll take care of it. So after you use your eyes, make sure it is true with your videoscopes. The shortcut to bring these up that you should remember is Command 7. Hit this icon and select the vector scope. This scope shows you the saturation levels and colors in your shot. But the thing we really need to pay attention to is this line. This is the skin tone line. No matter what your race or ethnicity, accurate skin should always fall on this line. Now there are exceptions like specific lighting or stylized color grades like you see in movies, but usually for accurate skin, it'll be on this line. What I'd suggest you do is hop into your inspector window, head to crop, and use the crop tool so only your subject's skin is selected. I usually use the forehead because it is the biggest area of skin on the face, Plus, there's not usually makeup on this area that can change the color of a person's skin if you are trying to correct someone's skin who uses makeup, of course. So as we can see, her skin is not on the skin tone line. Now, there are actually many different ways to adjust this, and it is going to depend on the shot. But let me mention some important points first. Usually, it's not just your subject's skin that's off color. Oftentimes, other areas of your shot might be off color, due to an incorrect white balance in camera, or even the fact that some cameras or lenses seem to add a color cast to your entire image. So usually the quick fix is to use your global wheel. I'll add another color wheel adjustment for the example so it's not in the contrast saturation layer. You'll go to your hue slider on your global wheel. And for those who are new, the global hue slider lets you push a hue or color into your entire image. So all you'll do is see what color is being cast on the skin. So in this instance, her skin is swinging more towards yellow. We'll find yellow on the color wheel and push away. This introduces more of the opposite color into the shot, which eliminates the cast and corrects her skin. Once we toggle the crop off, you can really see how off we were. Now the shot does need more work. I'm not too happy with the cast I'm seeing on our blacks. So what I'd like to use is our shadows wheel to push away from the blue hue quadrant, and this eliminates some of that blue cast. We could also use the Luma versus Sat curve to clean up these areas as well, like I teach in my color grading masterclass. But for this example, we'll stop here because her skin is accurate. Remember how I said that there are many different ways to adjust your subject's skin depending on your shot. This is a perfect example. His skin is inaccurate, as we can see by the fact that his skin is slightly off the skin tone line. But the issue here is that if we use the global hue slider to remove this yellowish green cast, it'll also affect the warm bright light that we have coming in from the windows, and we want to keep that. With this shot, we're going to get a better result by using our shadows hue slider. Why is that though, Dylan? Skin tones usually lie in the mid-tones, so why not use our mid-tone slider so it mainly affects him? The reason is, because we want to keep the very brightest parts of our shot that same warm golden color, we'll use the shadows hue slider because it'll adjust the shadows the most, the mid-tones a little, and the highlights the least. That's because using your color wheels does not make an isolated adjustment to those areas in your shot. They make big, broad strokes across your image. Once we turn off the crop and see what we did, you'll see that although it's a minor adjustment, we removed that cast, got his skin to be more accurate, and kept that warm golden light in the highlights that we wanted to see. This shot is also a great example of how there's not a one-size-fits-all approach. So her skin is not accurate, as we can see. It is way off the skin tone line. Yet, if we bring up our RGB parade, this tells us that our black point, or the very darkest parts of our shot, is close to true black. How you can tell this is if the very bottom of your three channels are lined up pretty evenly. And these are. So you might think, well then, let's just adjust our mid-tones by pushing the mid-tones hue slider away from that bluish color cast until her skin is on the skin tone line. But the problem is, since your color wheels make a big gradual adjustment to your shot, 
This also affects your highlights and your shadows slightly. So with this shot, because our black point is correct, we'll use the temperature and tint sliders. These sliders work in an interesting way. They don't affect your black point, but they do gradually affect the mid-tones and your highlights. And because her skin is a bluish hue, we'll add a warmer color temperature by pushing to the right. So this adjustment keeps our black point locked down so we have natural looking blacks, but it'll gradually affect everything else in the shot, which will help it to get back on track. Look at this difference. The last thing you could do to perfect this is add a hue curves, go to hue versus hue, which lets you adjust the color of whatever color you want. And we're gonna use the picker here to select this greenish color in the background. Then we'll just adjust our points here until that color has been changed to something more pleasing. We could even use our Luma versus Sat curve, which lets you adjust the intensity of color in different brightness values. And we could suck out that saturation from these specular highlights in the back. So here is that hue curves adjustment we just made. And here is our color balance adjustment. It is a pretty big difference, huh? This shot is an example where the new enhanced light and color feature works pretty well. It didn't for the other shots though. So his skin was off the skin tone line, and now it's closer, but it still needs a slight tweak. So for a slight color adjustment to a specific color, let's bring up the hue versus hue curve. Select his skin, and adjust it until it's on the skin tone line. Adjusting log footage is usually easier because of the wider color gamut and tonal range that you have with the footage. And if you don't grade log footage, stick with me because I have a feeling that you might in the future. I purposefully set this shot with an incorrect white balance, which has made my skin and the rest of the shot blue. With log footage, it's usually as simple as adding a color wheels, placing it before the input LUT, turning on our crop, and swinging our global hue slider away from the blue until the skin is on the skin tone line. Another important point to bring up is that your skin's trace should be 10 to 40% up the skin tone line if you connect the yellow and red hue. If it's more, your skin is too saturated. And if it's less, it needs more saturation. And once we turn off the crop, look at that. It is a night and day difference and you can do it so quickly. This shot probably has a warm cast due to me setting my white balance incorrectly, as well as the ND filter that I use. But an adjustment is as simple as adding a color wheels adjustment before the input LUT, cropping into Jane's skin, swinging the global hue slider away from yellow, which is the gross color cast on the entire image, and making sure that her skin is about 10 to 40% up the skin tone line. And once we toggle the crop off, it is like magic. A global hue adjustment is usually all you'll need for log footage. Keyword usually though. Each shot may need a different approach. So by knowing what you're looking for and knowing the right way to adjust it, you can get professional looking shots every time. For those interested, my color grading masterclass is currently 65% off. I teach way more tips and tricks and I go even more in depth. Link is in the description and comments and I hope you have a great rest of your day.